Good afternoon, my name is Dora Farage from University of Montpellier. I'm going to present the work that we have done with Cote de Corrigion Brian Summer from Tulane University on adaptive compositing and navigation of variable resolution images. We present a new high quality compositing pipeline and navigation approach for variable resolution imagery. The motivation of this work is to explore the use of variable resolution images as quick and accessible alternative to traditional gigapixel mosaic. Indeed, uh, gigapixel panoramas allow um, to give a context of a landscape while uh, letting the user zoom uh, to see detailed captures with a billion of pixels contained in each image. This process is really tedious to acquire because you need to acquire a lot of images of the whole a landscape and you often need here, for instance, a robot to help you to do the acquisition precisely. And it can take here up to one hour and 40 minutes with, even with this assistance to get a 3.3 gigapixel panorama. Um, it takes more than often, more than days to, to get uh, those images and it's a very hard and tedious process. And in the process, you also have some change in exposure because it's a long um, acquisition that you're doing. And you can see that even with the color correction that you can perform, you still have some natural colors that can appear. Additionally, with the um, moving object, you can have ghosting artifacts that, uh, that are here where you have parts of object visible because they are visible in one image and not in the other because he moved in between the two acquisitions. Um, the classical mosaic stitching pipeline is met as two main steps. Uh, the registration that allows to have all the images in the same reference fr frame before doing any processing. And the processing is usually the compositing that allow to overcome the two difficulties that we've seen before. Um, there, is, there are a lot of robust solutions that have been proposed for registration, so we won't focus on this part, mainly focus on the composition. Let's see how it's done in the classical pipeline. You usually have some blending or a seam composition. And then, once you have all of the images that are put together, you want to collect, correct the colors in order to have a seamless image. Um, the com composition using blending is uh, more than often not good because you have some boosting artifact coming from the fact that you're mixing two images where you don't always have the same object in there. So what you usually prefer doing is to compute seams to cut the image to have uh, either one part of the image of one image visible or the other part of the other image. Um, there are a lot of solutions for single resolution settings that have been proposed, and let's see uh, one of them for seam calculation. So you want to remove the overlap without blending. So what you do is uh, you perform a labeling of each pixel, and you choose which image is going to give the color to a pixel, pixel by giving its uh, ID. What you're trying to do is minimize the transition between labels. For that, you will define an energy and usually use graph cuts to perform um, so the computation and know where to cut each images and which labels to assign to, to which node of, uh, of a work. And then once you have uh, the well-cut images, you want to, to um, do uh, color blending and you use it in a gradient domain, which has given a lot of good, good results, which allow you to have a seamless uh, transition between images. And this is done uh, by finding an unknown image, which, uh, fitted, uh, which is fitting a guiding gradient film, uh, which we'll talk about uh, later. And we can add some boundary conditions in order to obtain what, what we want. So we can lock some values somewhere and then compute, uh, compute what it's going to be for the free part of the image for which we're trying to compute. Um, even those, so those two parts solve the two problems that we have seen, but what about privacy? You, you're taking images of everything and you're, you're taking images of, of 
for instance, people in their home or playing outside. So it's pictures that you don't want to have and they don't want you to have. And so you, you have an issue here, what you're taking picture of. And you also have um, a question that is, do you need all this resolution? Because you're acquiring a lot of images uniformly, uniformly everywhere. But here you're acquiring some skies, some bricks, some rocks, and is that really necessary? Um, here you can see that you have 52% of your acquisition images that are on, on things that you are not really of interest. And you have 1.7 gigapixels that are used and on which you would do computation that you don't really need to, which makes all the process very slow. And so what you can do um, is capturing only the region of interest. So how can we do that easily? Uh, we can um, use a variable resolution images. Uh, so you can define a root image that you take and then you can zoom in different parts and acquire different images that you will and then combine together to have a, a variable resolution image of your, of your landscape. So by doing that, you can have resolution where you want it, where you need it, and it's, uh, it allows you to have a fast and easy acquisition with, for instance, your handheld camera. Well, you, you zoom in, you, you click, and, um, and it allows you to have the same level of deep zoom if you have a deep zoom on, on your camera. And so how do we adapt the usual pipeline? It's not straightforward. So for reg registration, there has been some work that has been done and we'll assume uh, that the images are registered with a well-known method. And how is the rest of the compositing performed? Because this is a tricky part. Um, uh, most of the existing methods use blending um, to, to, go to, um, to combine the images. And we have seen that it's not the best method. It brings artifact and, it's, um, and you have some ghosting. So a better solution would be to use a standard pipeline, but it only works with single resolution. So what, do you, what you could do is that you could unsample everything, but you blow up in, in image size, but you can downsample to parcel level, but then you risk losing some detail. So what you could do is uh, go to intermediate resolution where you would have some extra memory and lose some features, but you can have uh, both disadvantages. So a better solution is to, to allow for variable image, um, image uh, solving and this is some some work that have been done for a uh, variable resolution texture and it's uh, the most relevant work to our approach which is zip maps which uh, uh, uses the registration information to generate a hierarchy of images and uh, to then compute greedily local seam seams um, for each parent child pair in the hierarchy and compute a gradient domain color correction along with the directly boundary conditions. Um, with the final alpha blend, it will allow, allow them to have a nice, uh, nice here uh, multi-resolution texture. And while it, it is the best current solution to, uh, to variable resolution compositing, it has several limitations in our context. Uh, indeed, uh, it will uh, induce a loss of detail for very large zoom where you have, uh, because the emphasis is given on the coarsest level in, in the composition. You can see here that you lose the detail of the insect if you take the low resolution instead of the high. Um, you will have some ghosting artifacts that appear because you have large motion of objects that can appear. For instance, here the flower is blown by the wind and you will have uh, some problems that you would want to avoid. And there is another question that we will try to answer that is how to navigate a variable resolution image. Um, the image as a result is seamless and your user is unfamiliar with the composition. Uh, you will be looking for details in course image, which is a, a tedious task. If you don't know where the resolution is, it's problematic. So we will answer this question on how to apply a compositing pipeline as high quality as single resolution to variable resolution image. 
And to do so, we'll have different steps. So we'll start from a collection of images with varying zoom levels that have been registered. So this is our input. And starting from that, uh, we will build an adaptive variable resolution graph that will um, allow us to uh, compute uh, seams and then to do a gradient domain um, color correction and to have uh, then a seamless uh, composition. And finally, uh, the image is viewed using a variable resolution image navigation that will present. Uh, first, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the quadtree mesh creation. We, we propose an efficient adaptive quadtree mesh for panorama. Uh, to do so, we built a uniform grid at the level of the coarsest image. Then we refine each grid cell to match the needed resolution for all detailed image. And so each quadtree level can be considered as a patch, and each patch layout can be considered as a stack with implicit connection between a node and its parent in the refinement. Each patch is saved continuously as blocks in memory with metadata for a given patch, width, height, zoom, quadtree level, and uh, the graph needed by the composition pipeline is the quadtree dual of this mesh. Rather than saving the neighbor and parent-child relationship explicitly, all edges are implicit in our approach, which allows for efficient storage and exploration because we'll need to find neighbors of given pixels efficiently between variable resolution. And because, of, because we have this structure, we, it allows us to propose a stable resolution preserving energy for multi-resolution graph cut segmentation. So what we're looking for is this. We want to compute this mask that allows us to have a nice transition between images. And so if we go back to the initial uh, setup with the standard segmentation energy, where we're trying to assign labels to each, uh, to each node, uh, we have uh, an energy that is composed of, of two terms. The daily term that is, um, tells you if the as assignment of this pixel p to, the, to a given image is valid. And it is zero, it's infinite otherwise, meaning that this pixel doesn't exist in this, in this image. Uh, and then you have the smoothness term that is an energy set to minimize the transition between images. And so it is here to minimize the change in pixel values between images. So those images, this energy in our context, does it work? So the answer is no, not directly, because we have inset images with a large zoom. And the data term relies on the fact that there are region in the mosaic for which only one image has valid pixels. And it's not the case when you have inset images because um, uh, it disappears by default. And, uh, and this is what minimizes uh, the, the smoothness term. So it's not handled without a manual, manually defined mask. So what we will come up with is a new parity-based energy defi definition. So it has another advantage. If you're handling inset images correctly, you can open the door to new application and user control. So if you look here at images that have the same resolution, but that are layers uh, put by an artist, for instance, each layer is an image, and for each image, you assign a priority that you want to keep while uh, flattening the image, so combining together all the layers that you have. And you, you want to do so while preserving the, the order that the user prescribed and minimizing transitions. So uh, what we will do is that we will update our energy to do so. So first, the data term is going to be updated to be set to the priority. Uh, so the image priority is going to be one for the highest and, and for the lowest, so that you have the same setup as what you, when you had something valid, it was small, and when you had something that is that is good, you had something big. And what we do uh, to, to uh, compensate for that is that you have to scale by the magnitude of the difference in priority values between labels, so that you can uh, still have a smooth uh, terms that still have uh, an effect and have a nice transition. So you have to adjust both to be able to, to allow the user to set some priorities and you can have this kind of results where you have uh, the 
order that is preserved and you have seams that are computed that uh, respect the order and have smooth transitions. You can note here if you look at the the layer with the lowest priority, which is the bottom layer, that you have this fish that disappear completely in order to have smooth transition and preserve the order. Um, so what, how do we adapt that to a variable resolution setting where we have not priority but zoom levels? So what we do is that we include that uh, in the data term by setting it to the inverse of the level of the quadrate refinement so that you have as uh, hyper priorities uh, the images with the highest uh, zoom level because it's where you have the most resolution so by default you would want to keep the ones where you have more information than what you have than, than the opposite and uh, since our energy is stable we can add an additional user control to trade priority pixel and the smoothness of the transition between images where you can play around with it and have uh, less of the high resolution image and have a better, maybe a smoother transition between the images. And now that you have your seams that are computed, you want to have um, a, a good uh, a smooth color over the whole image, so you do a random domain color correction, and we use an, um, a similar work that what Agarwala has, has proposed that um, allows for uh, an extension to non-uniform connectedness of a poetry for color correction. Um, so it's a similar approach that will allow for different boundary co condition. For instance, you can see that. Uh, if you're using different boundary condition, you won't have the same results because, for instance, Newman is optimizing across all pixels, where when you have Dirkla, you set uh, an image as an oracle, you lock something, and then you have the optimization that is performed, and you see that here, it's not what you want. You have some bleeding of colors that is undesired. And in our pipeline, what we do is that we use Newman for seamless color correction. And then once you have uh, the results for the unmasked parts, you lock that and you use directly to apply each new color to the mask portion. So then you will have a full color corrected version of images that you can, that you, you, that you can process afterwards and look at. One final step is that we, we propose a resolution jump alpha blend because when you look at the image, you can see that for low resolution, it will appear blurry next to the high resolution one, even if the transition is smooth in color and, and, and in scene. Uh, so you can adjust that with, uh, by adding a blend that will depend on, that will be proportional to the jump in zoom resolution size. And to do so, you just adjust the segmentation mask uh, with the radius of the of blend that you, that you want. And since you use the fully co color corrected images, you have no, no problem in, in, in mask part appearing. So the output here is color corrected images, transformation, and masks that we have. Um, and so here is a question of navigation that remains. So how do we find the detail? Because we have a seamless image. Uh, if you zoom in in the wrong spot, then you pan, pan to try to find some detail area, but it, it's a tedious task, uh, finding the fitting zoom level while navigating, try, trying to figure out where to look and how zoomed in you should be to, to take advantage of the resolution. Um, so what we propose is a resolution hugging pan that will go along with um, with, uh, with some, some uh, pointers so to know where to click to have some uh, to have some resolution you can we are going to display our segmentation results and also propose to use a smooth animated zoom uh, for instance center to all hip yeah, a public approach where when you click, you will zoom in nicely with a smooth, uh, smooth zoom that is that is uh, uh, comfortable when when you're navigating. And to 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 tell you a little bit more about the, the navigation field is a resolution hugging pan that will targeting that match the zoom level at boundaries and adjust smoothly in between images. 
And to do so, we have a scalar field for uh, per pixel uh, zoom factor. And to compute it, we set the boundary values to the nearest quadrant level, boundary between zoom levels. And if we have some intersection, uh, we erode them to avoid singularities. And then we use our Poisson solver simply um, uh, to have a smooth uh, zoom field. Let me show you some results. Here you can see um, three images that have been acquired with different zoom levels. Uh, you could see the, the flower that was moving that we could see ghosting art artifact on previous work is well represented. And um, you can have here different zoom levels where with uh, uh, a handful of images and you can see here the, the resolution hiking pan that allows you to have the correct zoom levels that goes along with um, the resolution that you're looking at. And the transition are um, not visible. You have uh, the themes that are well computed and um, the color correction that works well, uh, thanks to uh, the variable resolution graph that we have that uh, allow for all this computation. and. Um, here we have a very large panorama on which we have zoomed several times uh, and um, see the navigation is pretty smooth. You can click on some parts, it will zoom in and you can zoom out while you, it zooms out while you're panning. And um, here is a very large zoom that uh, was acquired very easily and that would have asked for a very high resolution uh, image everywhere and a long uh, processes time, if, processing time, sorry, if you had um, a full uh, GK pixel panorama. So we have seen um, how we have achieved um, high image quality by adapting the state of the art mosaic compositing to the variable resolution domain using a noble adaptive pipeline. Um, we have proposed a new navigation approach and a resolution hugging pan that allows you to navigate in those images in a fast and intuitive way. I thank you for your attention and I will be glad to answer any questions.